So, uh, hi, my name is uh, Thomas LeMay, and uh, about some years ago, I initiated the Open Structures project. Maybe if we could show the slides on the TV, on the projector. Slides. Slides. Yeah, great, thanks. So it's actually a very simple concept. What it proposes is a modular construction model, but that work, one that works according to the Wikipedia model. So basically what that uh, means is that rather than having one company or one designing, designer designing a complete system, uh, copywriting it and then selling it out to end users, what we propose is a kind of a Lego system where everybody who wants can contribute parts uh, to kind of a shared and common uh, modular database of parts. So rather than one designing everything for all, this is about all designing for all. So whereas Wikipedia actually uses HTML as a kind of common design template that allows me to read articles of others and allows, uh, but also allows me to write uh, my own articles. What the Open Structures model proposes is a kind of, uh, is a geometrical grid that is used as a shared design template amongst all the contributors. So what that means is, um, what you see here is actually a bunch of different parts that are all made by different people at different points in time, all with their own uh, techniques, uh, ranging from uh, high-tech parts to low-tech parts, but all actually based on the same grid, making them all compatible with one another. So actually what you get is you get a modular system, but that no longer has a uniform identity, but that actually allows for different signatures to emerge. Now these parts are then assembled into objects, ranging from appliances, furniture, vehicles we've been building, uh, we're look, we've been looking at interiors, interior designs, um, closets, scaffolding systems, and we're also now investigating what this could mean for architecture, both temporary architecture as uh, more uh, durable structures. Now what makes these designs different from the designs that we know is that these objects, they don't manifest themselves as static objects, but they rather behave as dynamic puzzles, which means just like a Lego car, we all know a Lego car is actually not a car, it's just a bunch of modular parts that at a certain point in time come together and form that car. But we also all know that this car will evolve over time and might become something completely different. Same for all these objects. So how does it work? Now actually at the core of the modular system, we have the components. So it's not the objects that are central, it's all about the components. Let's take this component for example. Uh, here you can see how it's connected to the grid or how its design is connected to the grid. Look at the assembly points. And here you see what the first person did with it. So Christiane Hoegner, she designed a swing uh, with this component. This swing was then passed on to the next person, which is Artin Aharon. He took the swing apart and he reconfigured it into a sled. So he took it apart, added some parts, um, designed some extra parts and you have, all of a sudden you have a sled. Then we took this sled and uh, it's passed on to the next person, to uh, Marijn van der Pol. And again, he took it apart and what he made from it was a suitcase, which you can see here. Then he took the suitcase apart and here you can see a bicycle in which again the same parts are used. So again, dynamic puzzles, but uh, another feature that is very uh, typical for this kind of systems is that you start to see different objects from completely different typologies, but that start to interlate with one another. You can take the back of the seat, slide it into the kitchen uh, module, and so on. So this is, about, this is what kind of objects it generates. Now, around the object, we also designed a service, and the service is there to facilitate this exchange between different uh, parts and also the, facilitate the discussion between different people. Let's take this object, for example. This is a sand digger. Every open modular object comes with a kind of a code with a bit of information. Now, 
what you can do is you can surf to openstructures.net. You can type in a kind of keyword that you found on the object. And the website will direct you to the profile page of this specific uh, object. So in this case, we type in Sable. It brings you to the profile page of the sand digger. Here you see the object. You get a small description. You get to know uh, who designed it, when it was designed, and where it was designed. But you also see what kind of parts this object is using. So if you click on the part, you can uh, download the 3D file of this part. You can start to puzzle around it with it yourself. But you can also see what kind of other objects other people have been building with it. So you can now jump from one object to another and see if you could actually maybe convert your sand digger into a sled, into a suitcase, integrate it into a bike, and so on. Now, in order to do so, you can uh, contact the other person that has, for example, designed this sled, and he will furnish you with the missing parts. Um, or you can contact the person who has designed the suitcase, and again, he will furnish you with the missing parts, or he will send you the DXF drawings that you can take to your local fab lab and uh, just print out or laser cut your missing parts. So in a way, what this system is proposing is an open modular system, is a system of, of design, of production, of retail, but that actually spreads the wealth among its contributors. As for the object, we had the service. Now, the third missing element within the object system is the space. Uh, this is a picture of our studio in Brussels. This is actually what you could consider the first Open Structures workshop. Now, what is the Open Structures workshop? It's kind of a, a physical database of all the parts and objects that have ever been designed from this system. And it's, um, we imagine it to become a kind of a new library, a place where people can come with their objects and puzzle around with them, play with them, um, adapt them, uh, take them apart, sell parts they don't need anymore, uh, or design, build further on them together with other people. Now, because this is uh, it's a very small space, so we don't have actually enough, uh, it's not a real public space at this moment, but in order to test this space, we actually invite every four months somebody else uh, to this place and we ask him to play around with the place, with the system. This is Fabio. He designed this part, which is a kind of an adapter piece between a PET bottle and the grid. We then passed this part to Dries, who integrated it in his design for a coffee grinder. The part was then passed to Jesse, who actually, just like a Wikipedia article, improved it. And he improved the 3D drawing, so now it actually really works. Uh, he then integrated it into his design for a water boiler. We then gave this water boiler back to Dries, who is uh, experimenting with uh, 3D printing ceramics. He printed this uh, water filter and integrated it into the water boiler. So what you have now is a kind of a water boiler filter, uh, which no longer has one designer, but which has three designers. And what you also get is objects that actually evolve over time, just like species. So why? Why am I doing all this effort? Why? What, what are the promises that this project could hold? First, what could be in it for all of us? From an ecological perspective, as I just have illustrated, uh, it facilitates the reuse of components. So it talks about the more cyclical uh, use of parts and components. But secondly, it also uh, facilitates collaborative innovation, especially because uh, we're building things from the same template, so they become uh, uh, compatible with one another. So it's really, it, it starts to create synergies between different objects. And thirdly, from an economical perspective, it creates incentives to not only to distribute and sell things, but also to recollect them, take them apart, store them, and uh, just sell uh, secondhand parts. Just think about what happens with old timers and the old timer culture. This is a bit uh, the same principle. Now that's what the, th that's about the promise that this project is holding. But and this promises, that's actually still a big question mark. That's still uh, a, a big question. I'm not sure if that is really going to happen because we're still at the beta testing stage at this point. But what I do know from doing this, from actually being part of this and, and building this, designing this, taking, taking it apart and so on, 
is uh, what it means for me and what it can mean for the user. Because for me, this is a reality. Now, first, what it did to me or what it means for me is that I start to look differently at things. I no longer judge an object for what it is, but I start to imagine what it could become if I would take something apart, if I could reuse this part in another object, and so on. So it's a completely different engagement that you get with our built environment. Now, secondly, it also allows me to experiment. It's a modular object. It's not a definite final solution that needs to be perfect. It's just something that I propose, that I put out there, and then it's for other people to play with it, to improve it. So it kind of puts a bit uh, the stress off my back, let's say. Third, all the objects you have seen, they're not, probably not the most streamlined object, they're not, maybe not the most uh, uh, high-tech, sophisticated ones, but for sure they're also non, not the most intimidating ones. They, because of how they're built, because of how they're designed, they uh, stimulate the user to actually take them apart and to play around with them because they're simple and they have a very transparent construction. So it could stimulate the emergence, again, of these kind of places where these things happen. Fourth, as I mentioned before, it stimulates dialogue, not only between us as end users, but also between maybe bigger producers and end users. Imagine we are uh, uh, designing a, a kind of bar that turns out to be very popular. Maybe then a, a producer could contact us maybe to bring it into production and so on. So it's, it's, it's no longer a monologue, it's a dialogue. And fifth, because of all these four things that I just mentioned, what it actually means to me as a user, as somebody playing this game, is that it enrolls me in a never-ending learning process. It's kind of because I look differently at things, I talk with people, I take things apart, I kind of self-educate myself without even noticing it. So it's just, it's a nice thing to be part of. It all works together or it doesn't work at all. This is a quote that I found in World Change, and this is how they define uh, an ecosystem and how an ecosystem works. And this is actually, if I think about it or if I read that, this is actually what I'm trying to do with this project, trying to create uh, an object, not an object, an object system, let's say, where there's a very, where the space, the object, and the service are very much interrelated and uh, influence each other to a large extent. So please join us in building the most diverse modular system in the world at uh, openstructures.net. Thanks a lot. <laughs>